What's up guys, I'm Nick of Cam Crunch, and today's video is going to be the second episode of the How I Make YouTube video series, and it's going to be all about audio. But before we start, I just want to thank you guys for all of the positive feedback that you guys gave in the first video, the first episode of this series. And I actually learned a couple of things. One comment on the blog, I think it was by Sam, suggested that I, I mentioned that I use the flip out screen a lot but he noticed that I keep looking at the screen, so he suggested that after I compose and focus my shot that I flip it uh, towards the back of the camera again so that I don't keep staring at it. So that is something that I'm going to do moving forward, and I'm just going to try not to move around too much, move my eyes around too much. So again, thank you guys for all of the comments that you guys gave in the last video. So now let's get back to the main topic of this video and that is going to be the audio that I use. Now audio is very important when you're making online videos, YouTube videos, that sort of stuff. And I would even rate it as being as important as the visual side of things. So when people start, they usually think what camera, what lens, what software, what settings I use. And a lot of people neglect the, the audio side of things, but when you're spending you know hundreds of dollars on getting good video, you want to spend at least you know fifty to hundred dollars on getting good audio into your camera or recorded separately so that you can get nice sound because nice sound or bad sound can make or break a video. So just keep that in mind and you know put some money aside if you're going to make videos into audio. When it comes to DSLRs, the preamps built in aren't that good. In fact, they're quite noisy when you increase the gain uh, quite a bit. So you want to keep that as low as possible. So you want sort of a mic source that can compensate for that and give you additional gain. And that is that brings me to the setup that I use. As you can see here, I use a lavalier mic, which is plugged into a Zoom H1 which is a handy recorder, and that is plugged in straight into the camera. The Zoom H1 on its own is a very good device. It's a portable recorder, so it's got a mic built into it, and it's sort of meant so that you speak into it and then you record onto the memory card. But what's nice about it is that you can use the mic as a dedicated mic for your camera. So for my very first videos, not my very first, but for a lot of the videos that I did on the channel, I was actually using the Zoom H1 as a mic for my camera which produced very good results. And I would even say that the results are maybe better than what I'm getting out of this microphone right here, which I am plugging into the Zoom H1 and then to the camera. However, the Zoom H1 isn't that versatile in that when you're using a lavalier mic, I can move around and the mic follows me because it's attached to me. Whereas with a Zoom, it's sort of attached to the camera or attached to a mic stand or something like that. So you sort of have to stay in the same spot. So that brings me to the, the, the lavalier mic. The lavalier mic, like I said, follows you when you're you know, sort of moving around. And that is good for, you know, I tend to move around a lot when I'm, when I'm speaking. And it's also good for like, you know, if I'm going to show something, pick something up, I can sort of move a little bit and I don't have to worry about the mic volumes changing. Now, if I talk down here, it's going to increase the volume, but generally it sort of stays the same, which is nice. Another benefit to having the lavalier mic here is that it's very close to the source. And so you don't need to increase the gain that much. And when you don't increase the gain that much, since you're getting sort of the perfect gain for your mouth, it's sort of drowning out the outside noise. And I don't know if you can hear, you might hear because it's really noisy outside. So you might hear some sound, but generally it cuts out the sound that you hear in the background, which is really good when you're doing these kinds of videos, especially in some noisier environments like this one. So you might be wondering why I still use the Zoom H1 if I'm you know, just using this microphone, and there are two reasons for that. I can actually plug this straight into the camera, but like I said earlier, the preamps of the camera aren't that good. So when I plug this straight into the camera, it's really soft if I lower the, the gain, and if I increase it, I get a noisier sound. So what I like to do is, again, I keep that gain as low as possible without shutting it off. So it's like one above the offsetting, just level one. The zoom acts as sort of an amplifier of the gain. So the gain on the camera is very low, so I need to boost this up somehow 
and that is what the Zoom H1 does. I can actually control the gain from the Zoom H1, which has a much cleaner uh, preamp, so much cleaner gain coming from the Zoom H1. So it's, again, it's sort of like an amplifier. So what I then do is, again, I plug this into the Zoom H1, the Zoom H1 into the camera. The camera's gain is set to level one, and then I monitor the audio through my camera, uh, through the manual settings, I watch the meters, and then I increase the gain on the Zoom H1 until I reach my desired uh, gain levels. And I usually like keeping it at an average of negative 12 dB. And it's going to go higher than that depending on how loud I speak. But typically you want to speak or you want to record softer rather than louder. Because when you over modulate the sound, so when it sort of peaks and cracks, you can't save that. It's like sort of lost um, information. Sort of like when you clip highlights when you're shooting a digital photo, it's really hard to save. That's how it is when you clip uh, audio, when, you, when it peaks at the top. So you want to record softer rather than louder because when you have a clean soft sound, you can increase it in post and you'll be better off than if you try to lower a distorted sound that you get from over modulating or peaking your sound. So again, that is my setup for YouTube videos. So that's it guys, that is how I record my audio when I'm doing these YouTube videos. If you guys do YouTube videos, let me know how you record them. Leave a comment down below or in the blog. And next episode is going to be all about lighting, so stay tuned for that. Like the video if you haven't yet, subscribe, favorite, uh, comment, add me in the social networks, and I'll see you guys in the next one.